What's up everybody, I'm Ruby Juice, and I wanted to put together a little video explaining the Seasons menu. So once you have the Seasons mod installed and you open up a new save game with the mod activated, you hit Alt S and it pops open the Seasons menu. So the first thing you see when you open up the Seasons menu is the calendar. Now this calendar shows you the planting and harvesting seasons for each crop. In this save game I have it set to 9 day seasons which is why you see it go up to 9 days for each season. So for each crop in the calendar, you have the minimum soil temperature that's needed to plant that crop, and then you have its planting window and harvest window. So for wheat, for example, you need to wait until the soil is at least 5 degrees Celsius, and you can plant it any time in spring, and you can also plant it in the last part of summer and all through the autumn. So you see there are a number of crops you can plant in the fall, they'll start to grow over the winter, and then they'll be able to be harvested the next year. But you have to make sure that you plant them early enough that they aren't going to be frost damaged. So this calendar tells you everything you need to know about when to plant and when to harvest your crops, as well as the soil temperature needed in order to make sure that they germinate. The next tab is the weather tab. This one's relatively self-explanatory. It shows you the forecast in high detail for the current day and the next day, and then gets into less and less detail as you go further out. You see down at the bottom it says that the forecast uncertainty increases with time. So the forecast it's giving for today and tomorrow will probably be accurate, but as we go further out, just like it is in real life, you don't quite know if that's going to be true. So there's a fair bit of detail given here. You have your maximum temperature, average, and your minimum, and then the predicted precipitation, the percent chance of that precipitation, the wind speed, and then the drying potential, which is a factor of the wind speed and the precipitation as well as whether it'll be sunny or cloudy. So for me, I see it's gonna be cloudy for all of today and all of Tuesday. Later Tuesday, it's probably gonna rain and then the sun will start to come out on Wednesday. Thinking back to the soil temperatures that we need to plant crops, looks like maybe at some point today, it might get warm enough to plant some crops, but then it's going to get colder again overnight. So we probably don't want to plant our crops if it's going to be too cold and give them frost damage. And the next tab will show us how tolerant the crops are to frost and drought. So the next tab is the crop info tab and it tells you frost resistance and drought resistance. So if we're thinking about planting wheat, we see as a seed it has medium frost resistance. When it's a young plant it has high frost resistance, but when it's mature it has none. It also has no drought resistance as a seed, low resistance as a young plant, and medium resistance as a mature plant. So we have to make sure the soil moisture is going to be high enough. And how do you know whether there's a risk of frost or drought? Well, you see down here at the bottom, the potential for frost damage increases as the air temperature falls below zero degrees. And also the potential for drought increases when the soil moisture is below 12%. And you need to use the measurement hand tool in order to measure the soil water content. So this is important when we're choosing our crops. So this table is going to be key in picking what and when we plant the crops. The next tab is the economy tab, which shows you the historical prices of each commodity over time. So wheat we see is at its lowest during the summer and then peaks at the beginning or mid winter. Whereas something like soybeans peaks at the beginning of summer and then drops off, has a little bump at the end of autumn, but really drops during winter and cotton stays high most of the time but does drop off a little bit during the summer peaks near the end of winter so this one's going to help you figure out when you want to sell your crops generally of course prices will still fluctuate but it's going to help you figure out how long you want to hold on to your crops the next tab is the crop rotation planner with this you can plan your crop rotations for up to four fields and it helps you figure out which crops are going to benefit each other if they're planted after one another so for planning for our first field we say okay I think we'll plant some wheat on our first field. It's a cereal. And then after the wheat, maybe we'll plant some canola. And you see that wheat has gone from 0.9 to a factor of 1.08. And the canola is also a factor of 1.08. So that means it's getting a slight benefit, obviously one being sort of a normal yield, and it's getting a slight benefit above that. Then we decide, okay, after the canola, I think we'll plant some soybeans. And we see that the soybeans are at 0.9, but because this is going to cycle around again, so it's assuming that we'll be planting wheat again after the soybeans, because as you see, boxes with none are skipped. So if we just do wheat, canola, soybeans, and repeat that rotation, the soybeans are 0.9, but it bumps the wheat and the canola up to 1.2. So we're getting a pretty good yield boost on the wheat and the canola. 
So if you play around with this crop rotation planner, you'll figure out which crops are going to benefit each other and give you that little yield boost, and which ones might hurt. And finally, the last tab is the settings tab. It's obviously just where you're going to choose exactly what you want. So you have your temperature settings, Celsius or Fahrenheit. You have your seasons introduction, so that's whether they're going to show you an introduction every time a new season starts. You can choose your season length. So your seasons go from three days all the way up to 24 days, depending on what you would like. You can turn crop moisture on or off. You can turn tracks in the snow on or off and you can turn whether snow will even fall on or off. And that's it for this video. I just wanted to give a quick overview of what the Seasons menu looks like so that you have a better idea of what you're getting into and maybe how to use it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.